Hi, I'm Dr. Rob Stevenson, and I want to welcome you to WKAR's new workshop series, The Curious Crew Road Show. I'm busy working on new episodes of Curious Crew, so Mrs. Pizzo will be your host for this virtual event featuring fun and exciting science, technology, engineering, and mathematics investigations. And of course, the Curious Crew is ready to tackle these investigations with her. So let's get started. And remember, my friends, stay curious and keep experimenting. Learning in Michigan has changed. The Michigan Learning Channel now allows learning from anywhere. On air, online, on demand, and it's all available statewide for free to students, parents, and teachers from Michigan's public television stations. For more information, visit michiganlearning.org. Welcome to WKAR's Curious Crew Roll Show. I'm Mrs. Pizzo, and I'm glad you're here with us today. I'm also glad to have members of the Curious Crew with us. Say hello, Curious Crew. Hello. Hello. Great. How about you introduce yourselves and tell us your grade? My name is Rashad and I'm in eighth grade. My name is Jacob and I'm also in eighth grade. My name is Sasha and I'm also in eighth grade. Great. Curious Crew, can you name something made with wax? One thing that's made of wax is lip balms. Brands are made out of wax. And lastly, some food packages are made with wax. Those were great observations. Here are a few more. Shoe polish, hand creams, and even glue are all made of wax. What do you think we're going to explore today, Jacob? I think we're going to explore wax. That's right. We're going to explore wax science. In our investigation, the Curious Crew is going to recycle crayons into candles. Let there be light. Hi, I'm Rob Stevenson, and this is... Curious Crew! Welcome to the show, everybody. We always love to start with a couple of discrepant events because discrepant events stimulate... Curiosity! That's exactly right. And I've got some fun ones for you guys today. You might have noticed I've got this bowl of water on the table. And in fact, I have a candle right in the middle of it. And it may be hard to see, but the water level is almost up to the top of the candle. So Rishab, I have a wondering for you. If I light that candle, what will happen if I just leave it burning? I think the wax will melt until it reaches the water level, and then the fire will extinguish when it reaches that level. Awesome. So I'm gonna use another candle. So I'm just gonna slowly, carefully light this. And then we're going to let it be for a minute. Now, meanwhile, while that's burning, I wanted to show you this. I've got this block of wax. This is called paraffin wax. And Sasha, what do you notice about this block of wax? I'm noticing that the top part is lighter and then the bottom part is darker. So we've got the top that's light and the bottom that's dark. So I'm just gonna keep my finger on that bottom part because this is the one that's darker, right? And so what's really strange is, wait a minute. Okay, you said this one was darker. Okay, wait, okay, so it's this one that's darker, right? So now when I turn it over, now that's way, <laughs> that's really strange. Okay, the bottom continues to be darker. Uh, why don't I try this? Okay, now wait, now the bottom is lighter and the top is darker, or no, the top is lighter. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom is darker. I could even try going from the side. Now this is really unusual. Don't you think? That's kind of strange. All right, I'm gonna set this aside for a minute and I wanna go back to my jar here, my bowl for just a moment. Now, if you look closely, that flame is actually right on top of the water level. 
And as I continue to wait, that flame will start to go under the water level. How is that possible? This is an unusual phenomenon. We know water is going to put flame out. So how can this happen? Anybody have a guess what we're going to be talking about today? What do you think, Jacob? Are we talking about wax? It absolutely does have to do with wax. We got a wax candle here, our paraffin block over here. These are some unusual phenomena. I'm gonna ask a three of you to see if you can do some scientific modeling to see if you can figure this out using clues throughout the show. Who would like to engage in a little scientific modeling moments? Who would like to try this? Okay, Audrey, Carmela, Nash, you three are gonna work on this. Take one more look at this candle. It is unbelievable. It still hasn't gone out yet. Amazing. Stick around. You're going to want to understand how these phenomena work, too. Whoa. We cast members sometimes do the Curious Crew Roadshow events. Ready? And go. The front one. Oh, totally the front. We will set up all these different experiments we have done in the episodes and then we will open it up to the public and then people will come in and then we will teach them about all of these experiments. I got to reach out to younger kids and kind of show them some science experiments. It was really fun seeing them all happy about it and excited about science. One, two, three, go! I remember one time we did these experiments with the cups, how you can pull both sides of them, made the cups stack by itself. Yeah, that was really fun. The kids seemed to enjoy it. I know several kids after the event have come up to me and say, hey, I love that experiment you did. It really helped me. Whoa! Are you curious about careers in science? Hi, I'm Jenna Lynn, and today I'm here with LaCheryl Turner at Fiat Chrysler Automobiles headquarters in Auburn Hills, Michigan. LaCheryl, what do you do here at FCA? My team and I are responsible for all the color materials that you see on a vehicle, and we are in our design dome. Our job is very similar to an interior designer's job. Instead of a house, we have a vehicle. We're inspired by different things in our everyday environment. I didn't know there were so many shades of red and blue and black, too. STEM is incorporated in everything we do, but more so STEAM because of the art and engineering aspect of it. This is our light room. We look at all of our materials to make sure that we have color harmony. What is your advice to kids, especially girls, who are interested in a career like yours? My advice to kids is to really participate in the STEM programs that are offered at their schools. LaCheryl Turner from Fiat Chrysler has given me the drive for design. Explore your possibilities. Now we'll review the materials. You the old crayons, paper cups, small clean glass jar, stiff candle wick, scissors, microwave oven, paper towel, a deck of cards, popsicle stick, and tape. And remember to wear your safety goggles because... Safety first. Great. Curious Crew, let's show a thumbs up if you're all set with your materials. Next, I'll review the procedures. Then our Curious Crew will get started on the investigation, talking us through their process. And remember, you at home can also complete the investigation and many others by visiting www.wkar.org slash Curious Crew Curiosity Guides. For our procedures, you need to first peel off the paper from the crayons. This might take a little time, like our Curious Crew members discovered. Then you want to place a different color crayon in each paper cup. Cover one cup with a paper towel and heat in the microwave. We recommend adult supervision for this portion of the investigation. Next, you'll begin with 45 seconds. Add time until the crayon wax has melted completely. Pour the melted wax into the jar and insert the wick into the center. Lay a popsicle stick across the top of the glass and carefully tape the wick in place. Let the wax harden. Then repeat with another color crayon. You can even try tipping the jar on edge 
by placing a deck of cards under one side. Experiment using different colors and angles, letting each layer dry in between. And you want to finally trim the wick down when finished. All right, Curious Crew, you may begin. And remember, talk us through your investigation. Rashab's mom is going to help with the melting of crayons, just as each one of our Curious Crew members had an adult help them as well. I'm going to break it up here before putting it in. So that way, maybe it's going to be easy, more easy for it to melt. Instead of having one color in each cup, since I only have one color on each crayon, I'm doing mixed colors and into the cup all together. And then I'll have a blend of colors. Jacob, what are you doing with your colors? Are you blending them, mixing them, or using single colors in each cup? I'm mixing lighter and dark colors and breaking them so that, it will, so that they will melt faster. Very good. For my second cup, I'm mixing a light purple and a dark purple. Rashab, once you are all ready to start melting. Your parent can come and grab your cups and microwave them. Okay. Each one of our Curious Crew members also had an adult supervise them by melting the crayons in the microwave. And remember, we're starting with 45 seconds to see if we can melt the crayons completely. And then we will increase in increments of 10 seconds until the crayons are completely melted. Right now I'm putting the rest into the jar. Okay, so now I have my three cups ready with the crayons in them. And now my mom will help me to put them in the microwave for the paper towel over them. Sure. Thanks. Yes, that's an important part with the paper towel over the mixture when you microwave. And Jacob, what did you discover after you microwaved your crayons? My crayons slowly started to harden after being extracted from the heat. So as it began to cool off, the wax began to harden again, which made it impossible for you to pour into your candle, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Very cool. It kind of, some of it spilled, so that was a problem. Oh. Just as I was taking it out of the microwave. But I got some more, but I don't know if I have enough to fill up the whole thing. Oh, that's nice. Very cool. I also want my candle to smell good and not just like crayons. So I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla extract to it. Just a little, since it's very sticky. That was a really clever idea to make it have a sweeter smell than crayons to add a scent. So one of the things that we're noticing is that microwave, perhaps microwave power does make a difference in the time it takes to melt the crayons, correct? Mm -hmm. Nice job, everyone. This was certainly a lit investigation. Get it? Yeah. We made crayon candles, but with a lot of adult supervision and help. You can make hand dip candles out of beeswax also. Because beeswax is so thick, you will need to take fewer dips to make each candle. To dip two candles at a time, you start by tying a hex nut to each end of a 20 inch long wick. 
Then you hold the center of the string so that the two dangling ends are a couple of inches apart. You dip the strings into a cylinder of melted beeswax. Dipping your hot candles in cold water quickly cures the wax so that you can dip into the wax once again. In no time, you'll have beautiful tapered candles to enjoy. Isn't that cool, Curious Crew? Yeah. We discovered that it takes a lot more time than maybe we anticipated to make our crayon candles also. Didn't we, Curious Crew? For sure. But is it worth it? Definitely. Very good. Wax is an interesting substance that comes from different sources. These include decomposed or fossilized carbon-based matter for petroleum and mineral waxes, secretions from animals, plants, or insects, as well as synthetic waxes, which are man-made waxes from natural gas. Whether the wax is made from crude oil, the glands from a bee, processed soybeans, or natural gas, wax has unique properties that make it really useful. There is a lot of science involved in burning a wax candle, but where does the wax go when it's burned? To understand, we need to look at the structure of wax, which are long chains of fatty acids linked to alcohols or carbon atoms. When heated by the flame, the hydrogen and carbon atoms react with the oxygen and produce water vapor and carbon dioxide as gases in the air, as well as give off both heat and light. In time, all the candle wax can get burned away, making it seem like the candle is disappearing. One of the properties of wax is that it is water resistant, and another is that it gets shiny, especially if it's buffed. Polishing shoes or cars takes advantage of both these properties. Your leather shoes will have better luster while preventing water from damaging them, and your car will look great after washing and waxing it. Even beeswax that is secreted by bees to make their honeycombs is water repellent. We use beeswax on our lips to seal in moisture so our lips don't chap. Wax is wonderful. Our Curious Crew is gonna continue to complete their candles, but first they're gonna show us where they're at in the process. Rashab, can we see your candle? I tilted mine using the deck of cards that we had. And so, so far I'm at the part where the wax is about to dry and I'm about to put my wig in. And we know that when wax becomes solid again after it's been melted, that's a physical change. Jacob, how's your candle going? For mine, I kept it up straight and just poured a bunch of colors in. Wow, we can see the separated colors too. And Sasha, let's see the progress with your candle. Mine is nowhere to be done, but I started with a pink oil and then a blue oil, but I had some troubles with spilling wax. That was the only problem. But you also added something really cool that friends at home could add also. What did you add? I added some flavoring. No, I added vanilla extract, so you can add different extracts to give different smells. That's wonderful. This investigation is a little different than the ones we've done previously on Curious Crew Roll Show. The previous investigations took less time to complete, and this investigation with crayon candles took a much longer time. But I think it's a wonderful investigation to explore and complete with your family during the summer. Each crayon took quite a bit of time to melt and then reharden so that you can put on another layer and then continue to complete the candles to fill up the entire jar. Although it took time, it was more than worth it for our curious crew to complete their wonderful crayon candles. And I hope you too will try this at home. Well, that wraps up this episode of Curious Crew Rose Show. I hope you'll join us next time where Inquisitive Kids takes a hands-on approach to investigating principles of science, technology, engineering, and math. STEM on the road. 
And remember, stay, stay curious and keep experimenting. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Are you feeling curious? Yeah! <laughs> Are you guys having fun this morning? Curious Crew started when Susie Elkins saw me present doing a keynote, and she had a brainstorm. I saw him get an award, and the parents treated him like a rock star. They just loved that he was able to inspire a love for science in their children, and it was that that inspired me to want to make a show with him. What do you oh notice? Gosh, this is crazy. What, what do you notice? Being on the show with Dr. Rob is really cool. Oh, that was awesome. I have the reputation of doing a lot of hands-on investigations. Oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the experiments are really simple stuff you'd have lying around in your kitchen or in a craft room, and, and it's using those materials to teach these different concepts. Oh, that was good! Ultimately, we want the kids to work through science and engineering practices, what scientists actually do to be able to understand the concepts that we're exploring. You do a science experiment to see what happens, meaning a quote unquote failure is also a result too. Whenever we have a project like this and things don't go well, what would we do? Redesign. Redesign. Redesign it, absolutely right. Being on Curious Care made me realize that science is all around us. Science isn't boring, it's fun. We get some fizzy action. Rob's passion for science is contagious. Dr. Rob has a lot of energy on set. Energy in motion. That energy, it transfers to the cast members. Curious Crew has a roadshow element as well, and we'll go to schools, we'll go to fairs, we'll go to different events. I didn't want it to just be 10 shows and we're done. I wanted the children that were involved with it to feel inspired and empowered to go out and talk about their love of science. And we've created curiosity guides, the lesson plan behind each of the investigations in the show. Parents and teachers can download them from the website and use them on their own. Awesome. The show really makes science and engineering accessible, and it helps children realize that if this is something they're passionate about, they could do this for a lifetime. We could have a lot of fun with pulleys, don't you guys think? Yeah. yeah! At the end of every show, we point at the camera and say, Stay curious! And keep experimenting! There's so many ways that science touches our lives, and if you don't stay curious, you could totally miss out on those. Remember, my friends, stay curious! Stay curious! Stay curious! Stay curious! And keep experimenting. And keep experimenting. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna go at the end.